Go ahead and give him praise for new levels. Give two people a high five and say, climb new levels, climb, climb. Climb new levels, obtain new levels. Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, it's good to be with you. In God good. If God has been good to you, put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. Please lift up your right hand and say, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Say, The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? For when my enemies, even my foe, come up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble. And they fall because the Lord is my light and my salvation. If you believe it, put your hands together and give him praise. I want you, I want you to pray and declare that the word of the Lord will have a free course. Online, among us, on television and across the nations. That the word of the Lord shall have a free course. That the Holy Ghost will flow like never before. That God's people will be nourished. That there will be light and illumination and revelation. That the veil will be lifted. Embargoes will break. And that God will arise. And his enemies will be scattered. Put your hands together. Pray those prayers. Let your church be nourished spiritually. Let there be light. Let there be illumination. Let there be revelation, vision, insight, sight, divine vindication. Oh, let rivers of living waters, let rivers of living waters flow. Rivers of living waters flow like never before. In the name of Jesus, flow. Oh, rivers flow. In Jesus' name, let the deep wells and the fountains of the deep within break forth and let the rivers flow like never before i thank you lord in the name of jesus now one more prayer i want you to pray that the lord will renew my strength one more time he forgiveth all my iniquity he healed all my diseases he renews my youth as the eagle pray that i will mount up with wings as an eagle and will soar and carry you along with me to new dimensions and to new levels let my strength be renewed and even as my days so let my strength be somebody home and abroad put your hands together pray that prayer satisfy thy servant O Lord satisfy my mouth with good things let my youth be renewed like the eagles to feed your people to bring nourishment to bring light and illumination clarity revelation empower your people strengthen your people remove the veil give light sight insight to your people i pray like never before in the name of jesus put your hands together give the lord a shout you may be seated in heavenly places it's good to be with you here in the house and everyone online. Last week, I shared with you on the reasons and the benefit of fasting. And we have begun the week before last week talking about the ongoing conflict. And I want to return to the part two of the ongoing conflict. Somebody say part two, part two of the ongoing conflict. You know, I'll be honest with you, Christianity is not some religious, romantic faith we are dealing with here. It's, it's a fight. It's a fight. We contend for the faith. Our assignment is to enforce the victory. That was determined before the fight began. May I submit to you, 
that the victory was won before the battle began. Somebody say, I hear you. But the fact that the victory is won don't mean it's automatic. You got to still enforce the victory in order to have it. It doesn't just come because it's been won. The fact that principalities and powers have been destroyed don't mean that you don't wrestle and you don't contend. We still have to fight for the victory. It's like you build a house. You have title to your house and you have a lot of good things in your house. Does that not stop thieves from attacking or wanting to come in to come and steal? Even though the house is yours. The title is in your name. Everything is yours. But that doesn't stop thieves from trying or attempting to come and steal. And the Bible said in John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more in abundance. So we have two kinds of destinies or plans here. God's plan for you and I is for us to have life in abundance. An overflow of life. Favor on every side. That is God's plan. But the enemy also has a plan for you. Whether you like it or not. His plan and destiny for you is to steal your confidence, your peace, your joy, your sense of direction, satisfaction, fulfillment. Is to take away from you everything God has given unto you and to destroy and to kill you prematurely if it was possible. Lift up your hands and say, I decree and declare by the word of the Lord that I will not die prematurely. And in the name of Jesus, anyone that have spoken evil and ill of me concerning my life in the name of Jesus, let them be discredited and be silenced in the name of Jesus. Put your hands together, declare it. Let them be discredited and silenced. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light and the strength of my life. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies, even my foe, shall come up upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumble and they fall in the name of Jesus. Amen. So realize that God has plans for us and the adversary also has plans for our life. Say, I renounce Satan's destiny and plans for my life. Say, I enforce and superimpose God's plan and destiny for my life over the devices of the enemy and over Satan's plan for my life and that of my family. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say yes. Today, we are on the subject I entitled The Ongoing Conflict Part 2. Ongoing Conflict Part 2. I wish it was not so. But it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody said, Papa, why don't God just come down one of these days, kill the devil and all the demons, and just finish everything so we can be free? And I said, that time will come, but it's not yet time. But until then, we got to do what we have to do. Every one of you don't get tired of showering every day. I wish you can just eat once for the rest of your life and you don't have to eat anymore. What a beautiful thing. But it don't happen. You'll be hungry every day of your life and you must eat. Some of you eat four or five times a day. It is what it is. It got to eat to stay alive. You shower every day. You dress every day. And as you shower and dress and eat every day, you must shower every day in the spirit, washing of water by the word. You have to dress every day in the spirit and you must feed on the word. You must feed your faith and feed your spirit by the word of God. Every day, you must not be weary and tired. If you are not tired of showering, if you are not tired of brushing your teeth, if you are not tired of eating, if you are not tired of changing and dressing every day, you must not be tired when it comes to feeding your faith and your spirit spiritually. And you must not be tired of dressing spiritually. It is what it is. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God that proceeded 
out of the mouth of Elohim. Say, I hear you. Come with me to Ephesians 4, 27. Ephesians 4, 27. Neither give place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil means you have the authority to allow or to disallow the enemy from having a footprint, a fruit hold or place in your life. It's important for you to understand that. That the enemy wants to have a place in your life. And the Bible said you have the authority to allow or disallow the enemy. Don't allow him. But he wants a place. And if you let him, he will take it. And he's a bully. He's relentless. He's going to come after you. He's going to come after us. As long as you stand as a believer, please understand that the target and the goal of evil is to destroy good. Understand that evil is not satisfied till it destroys good. And that is what it is. It is what it is. I, 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 I wish it could be different from that. And I'm not going to try and romance you with some kind of uh, sweet words and for you to like me. I don't want you to like me. I want you to deal with the devil. And I want you to have the victory. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. Evil is not satisfied till it destroys good. Eh? And so you must understand that for as long as you are alive and you live, and you stand for God and you stand for good, you will always be the target of the enemy. And if you say, well, you know what? How about if I, if I take sides with the enemy, it's worse. Tell somebody it's worse to take sides with the enemy. Because the Bible says that his, his tender mercies are cruelty, cruelty. That is his tender mercies. You know, he, he don't play fair at all. So you are better taking a stand for God and God will take a stand for you. If you honor God, he will honor you. So it is what it is. Now come with me to Matthew chapter 12 from verse 43 to 45. Matthew 12, 43 to 45. When an unclean spirit. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, mm -hmm. he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, no, no, and no, vanished. No, 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 no. I want you to stop there. Can you please look at somebody and say, do you know that demons call you their house? Tell someone, do you know before you got born again, demons used to live in you? You. You were possessed by demons. Or make it easier for you, tell somebody, before you got born again, you had a lot of demons. You can speak in tongues and ask holy, but it is what it is. All of us, before we got born again, we all had demons that didn't dwell with us. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. Some, some of us, we inherited the demons from our mother's womb. We came with it right from the womb of our parents or our mothers until we got born again and the Holy Ghost came in. Jesus came in and drove those demons away. But they are relentless. They are bullish. They never give up. They call your body and my body their house. So they go looking all over the place and they can't find another body to live in. And then they are always looking for an opportunity and an occasion to come back again. Tell somebody, do you know the demons you used to have? They want to come back. You better hear me because you used to have some demons and they want to come back. Are you hearing me? And there are so many things that are openings for demons like unforgiveness, doubt, unbelief, pride, arrogance, envy, jealousy, covetousness. There are so many things, insecurity, fear. These things are openings that demons will come through and enter you. When you are going to bed at night and you leave your door or your window open, you, are, you open it up, mosquitoes and different things will come in. That's what the Bible says. Don't give him place. You have the authority to shut the door, shut the window, and not to let the enemy in because he wants to come in. And, and some of the attitudes we have are opening for demons to come in. And you see, these demons, 
They used to indwell you. They were our masters before. So they know us. They know you and I very well. And they know how to come at us. And they know the very thing to tempt us with. To, get, to come back. So the fact that you are born again don't mean you are free. Because the enemy is relentless. He's going to find ways to come back. And he knows exactly what to use to come back. Remember when I got born again, a, a girlfriend of mine had that I was born again. She was then in Germany. She flew to Ghana. I used to be at Church of Pentecost at Kaneshi. And she came to the church there after service. I saw her. And I said, Satan, what do you want here? And he said, you, Nick, Nick, look into my face. Look at me and tell me you are truly born again. And you don't want me. I said, look at Satan talking. Satan. Are you hearing me? She heard I was born again, and she said, no, no, no. Do you know you, eh? Some of your former girlfriends and boyfriends are still looking for an opportunity to get you back. And when they get you back, they say, but I thought you said you are born again. Are you really born again? You. So they don't give up on you as you are sitting there, worshiping God, doing everything to please God. There is an enemy also looking for an opportunity. They call him the spirit of Pharaoh. You've left Egypt, but he hasn't given up. He's still pursuing. He's still looking for grounds and an occasion to get at you. You need to have that understanding and awareness and stop being naive. Stop saying, well, I'm born again. I'm Holy Ghost filled. I've overcome. Yes, you have overcome, but you must defend the title. You have overcome, but you must maintain victory. Because there's an adversary there who is not joking and he's not giving up and he wants you back. Tell somebody, do you know demons? The demons that used to inhabit you, they want you back. Yeah, yeah. Some of you don't want to say it, but it is what it is. You all had demons before you got born again, including me. We all had something. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. But that is the reality. That's why this conflict is ongoing. Because even though we have the victory through the blood of the Lamb, and Jesus won the victory for you and I. Demons are still at work on the loose like never before. Doing everything to trap and to get us back under the agree. To prove a point that they still have you. But that's why every now and then we have to declare Psalm 107 verse 2. Psalm 107 verse 2. Let the redeemer of the Lord, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy, do what? Keep silence about it. Keep quiet about it. But do what? Say so. Say so. Keep saying it. Tell somebody, keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep saying you are redeemed. Keep saying you are redeemed. Remind yourself of the fact that you are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And you are not what you used to be before. Even if you are still battling and going through some trials and temptations, don't accept that you are the old man. You are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and it's a process to renew your mind to become the new person. So every now and then things of the old will lift up themselves. But keep reminding yourself, I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb from the hands of the enemy. I am not what I used to be before. I am a new man. Keep saying it till it becomes a reality. Put your hands together. Say yes. Go ahead. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. You know, the demons call you their house. I know you are very anointed. I know you are very gifted. I know you are very powerful. I know you are a prophet and a prophetess. An apostle, a bishop, an archbishop. I know you hear from God. But as long as you have flesh and blood, the demons are calling you what? They are what? Yeah, that is their claim and demand. In the spirit, they are making a statement, oh, this one, what kind of a prophet and a prophetess? Don't mind them. I used to dominate. I used to control them. I used to get them to do whatever I wanted. Now they say they are born again. Don't worry. I'll find ways to get at them. And the demons will come back every now and then to check you and to see whether you are full of the Holy Ghost. And whether the word of God is dwelling richly in you. And when they come and find you empty, vulnerable, they go. Look at it. Look at what they do. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Uh -huh. 
and they enter in and uh -huh. dwell there. Uh -huh. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. You see, so this is where the issue is. Sometimes you see a believer, a man of God, a woman of God, a prophet, a prophetess, an apostle, an archbishop, it doesn't matter who you are. Demons are not respecters of persons. They don't care about who you are. They went to Jesus and, and, and literally tempted Jesus. They tried Jesus. And the Bible said, Jesus overcame by the word. And the Bible said, and the, the devil lived him for a season and came back again. And when the sons of God gathered, Satan was in the mix of them. None of the angels of heaven saw him. It was God who identified him and said, my friend, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. You used to, but you don't belong here anymore. And he said, I want something to do. Get me something to do. I want a job. So this devil does not relent. And I'm telling you, as it is, I wish it wasn't so. But I have to tell you, because sometimes, you know, I wish it was not so. I wish I could just get up and just say, be done in the name of Jesus and it is done. It's not so. It doesn't work that way. Are you hearing me? He that overcome it, and you cannot have the victory if you don't overcome something. And to overcome means there is a conflict. You got to conquer something. Jesus has overcome to make it easy for you and I, but we have the responsibility to enforce that victory. It is not automatic. Somebody say, I hear you. I hear you and so the demon comes back and says, okay, the fact that you were able to slip out of my hands. This time around, I'm going for seven demons that are stronger and wicked than I. Come back. And sometimes you see believers backslide. And you look at their life and you can't believe that this person was born again before. The demons have come back. And this time they are not playing. And they are not giving you any inch to escape. So you have to be wise. You have to be on the alert. You must understand. That's what the Bible says. Let everyone work out their own salvation with fear and with trembling. And that's what the Bible says. He that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Hear me. He that word endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So it's possible that something can go wrong if you don't endure to the end. It's a constant conflict. Somebody say, I hear you. And I, I wish it wasn't so, but it is what it is. Tell somebody it is what it is. Say, I renounce Satan's plan for my life. I renounce his destiny for my life and for the life of my family. Come on, say it and put your hands together and give God praise. Amen. Come with me to Ephesians. Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Ephesians 6. Verse 10 to 13. Finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord. Yes, sir. And in the power of his might. Be strong, not in yourself, not in your intellect, not in your skill, not in your intellectual capabilities and your logic and your philosophy. But be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Look at the 11 verse. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. That, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So there are wiles of the enemy. And church, hear me. You must put on the whole armor. These are defensive armor given to us. To stand the wiles of the enemy. There are wiles of the enemy out there. And there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. And you must dress to be able to stand. I remember in 1981... I went to London, and my sister picked me out from Paddington train station to take me to the house. And I came with this African boo-boo in winter. And when I came out of the train in Paddington tube station, the wind, it was so cold, and the wind, my goodness, the wind was singing around my ears. And it was literally chewing my ears, and I started crying. And my sister said, welcome to London. And I said... I said, this kind of weather, I don't like it. Are you hearing me? She took me. I didn't have a winter coat, nothing. She took me to the hotel room. And when I entered, I won't come out. I just stayed in the room. I won't go to church. I won't go anywhere. They will come and say, Anyami, see me all. 
leave me alone. Let me stay here. Then they brought me a winter hat, a winter jacket, all kinds of winter stuff and something to cover my ears. And I went again into that same weather and I walked through and I didn't feel the cold like before. So if you are not dressed, the wiles of the enemy can get you. But God has made provision for you and I to withstand the wiles of the enemy. Go to 12 and 13. Look at it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are principalities that Jesus overcame, destroyed, made a public show of them. But they are bullies. They are relentless. They are still going to find ways of means to get our attention, to bully us, to exert on us, to afflict us even though they are defeated. So how do you prevail? Through the knowledge of the word of God. Through the knowledge of God. You need to continue walking in the light of the word. Having knowledge that these are bullish and they are going to do everything to exact on the believer. They are going to find ways of means to afflict us. They are going to find ways of means to come at us and to make you doubt your own salvation, undermine the knowledge of God in you and get you to doubt the integrity of the word of God. That is their job and ministry and assignment. And you must be better than that. And that's why the Bible says, put on the whole amount. Look at it. Go ahead. Verse 12. Against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, yeah. against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Yeah. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are real. They are real. They are there. And we wrestle. Whether you believe it or not, whether you know it or not, you are wrestling with unseen powers. Tell somebody, whether you believe it or not, and whether you know it or not, you are in a wrestling match. You are. They are wrestling with your emotions. They are wrestling with your consciousness and subconsciousness. Wrestling with your body. Wrestling with your emotions and, and your spirit. Wrestling with you. Ongoing wrestling. And sometimes you are there and you don't know what's going on. The other day I woke up early in the morning and, and my feet were in pains. It was like needles. Somebody is injecting me. So I took anointing oil and I said, in the name of Jesus, wrong address. I said, you are dismissed with immediate in the name of Jesus. Get out! Then suddenly, it disappeared. And I said, hey! Even at the time of 30 days of fasting and prayer, they are trying to inject me. Bishop David, injection power. I got a needles, my right feet, right there. I was feeling, but I said, where is this coming from? And I was just there and I said, so be people who don't understand this thing, how do they survive? Yeah, next thing they've rushed them to the hospital. And I said, I ain't going to any hospital. No, 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 no. Whatever these needles are and injections, I took anointing oil. I said, anointing oil, come here. I pour oil on my feet and I said in the name, I stamped my tongue, get out in the name of Jesus. Come out, come out. Stamp your feet and say, come out. Then suddenly, the whole thing disappeared. Then the next night before I went to bed, I anointed my feet. And I said, you won't access me. Don't even try, it won't happen. Hear me? The devil is not the respecter of how many years you've been in the Lord. Though. So stop all this, your, 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 your Christianity. Realize that you are dealing with an adversary who does not relent and is not the respecter of any person. He will try you at any time. That is his assignment. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the again, whole armor of God. Again. Do what? Take, take unto, unto you the again. whole armor. And, and, and maybe one of these days, maybe on Wednesday, Bishop, we need to teach them what the armor is because we have defensive and offensive armor. And you need to know them. And why you must take them. You have to. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. You got to understand. The shield of faith. The sword of the spirit. You must understand these things. It is required. That's why you dress the way you dress. Women take time to dress. Yeah. They take time to dress. And you put on all kinds of things to hold things together. 
Why, why, why are you saying that the armor is too much? When think about the kinds of things you do to dress up as a woman, then when you finish, when you finish all those things, you stand in the mirror, pine, pam, 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 uh, uh. Huh? Then after all that, you come around. How do I look? Am I okay? Before you come out, and spiritually, you don't want to be out. You don't want to be dressed. You are complaining that the spiritual armor is too much. It's necessary to have all those things. There's a reason for the helmet. The helmet protects your mind from demonic bombardments and all the thoughts and imagination and the fiery dust the enemy throws into your mind because the mind is the battlefield and the helmet, which is hope. 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 It's a helmet that protects the mind. It's important. And if you don't have, you see, the different armors there. There's only one which is for offense, the sword. Everything else is defensive. Yeah. And we need it. Men have to also dress. When I dress, I put on a belt or suspender. Anytime you see me pulling my pants out, then I'm, that means I'm, I don't have my belt on. And that's what happened. You are not well dressed. Without a belt or suspenders, the belt and the suspenders keep things together. It's the same thing spiritually. Look at 13 verse. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that uh -huh. ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. In the evil day. And having done all to stand. stand. There's an evil day. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from what? Evil. John 17. Jesus said, Father, I pray not that you take them out of this world, but to keep them from the evil one. There is evil in this world. Wickedness in this world. I was telling them in the first service, you have to be very, very careful about what you say about other people's children if you have children. Be careful. Tell somebody, be careful. And if you don't have kids, still be careful because one day you have children. And I realize that it doesn't matter how much you try. And what you do and how hard you work. You never know how kids or your grandchildren will turn out. You have to always trust God with them. And you got to be careful what you say about the children of others. I'm telling you. Because I've seen strange things in this world. It doesn't matter the good intention you have. That doesn't really matter. I was in London, mission to London when we had a call that Dr. Morris Rello, one of my fathers in the faith, that his son had taken overdose and died in the bathroom. And he had to go and bury him and come back to continue with the program. T.L. Osborne's son, same thing, my grandfather in the faith. When I was taken to heaven, they showed me a whole city and said, this is T.L. Osborne's city. And I said, that is my grandfather in the faith. I can tell you things that will blow your mind. Papa Hagen's grandson was on drugs and went to prison. And this was a man that Jesus appeared to several times, several times. These are no jokes. These are heavy dudes, more anointed than me. When I see some of the things they do, Ora Roberts, and all these heavy dudes, I've just concluded that you know something? Learn to mind your own business. Tell somebody, mind your own business. Mind your own business. Yeah. Because you don't know why people go through what they go through. The Bible said, a sower went to sow, and when men slept, an enemy came and so tears among the wheat. Then the servant said to the master, Master, didn't you sow a good seed? What is this? Among the good seed you planted. And he said, an enemy has done this. Sometimes it doesn't matter how good intention you have and all the investment you make in children. Sometimes the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy can do some things, can do some things against you and your children. And it takes God and God alone to turn it around. But thank God that God has made a provision in the word that the seed of the righteous shall be delivered and the seed of the righteous shall not perish. It's just a matter of time. Somebody put your hands together, shout yes. There's a reason why people go through what they go through in life. And you must always be careful 
that you are not one that accuses people and find fault with people. Come with me, please, to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. These are weapons of offense. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but mighty through God to yes, the sir. pulling down of strongholds. There are strongholds. And some of these strongholds are ideologies, imaginations, and thoughts. They are also attitudes, attitudes, negative attitudes, wrong attitudes. They become strongholds, unforgiveness, bitterness, being critical of others, self-righteousness, fear, doubt, unbelief, arrogance, pride. Looking down on people, despising of good, despising others, an attitude of ingratitude. You never know how to say thank you. All these are openings that demons will access and enter you through. Strongholds. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. The enemy will throw things into your head. He will, ma he will imagine things about you and send the things to your mind. Yeah. And you start seeing things. And imagining things, I was talking to somebody the other day and he said he's been seeing dead people in his dreams. And I said, it's not them. It's not them. It's appointed unto man wants to die and after that judgment. So when an absent in the flesh present with the Lord. So I said, it's not any of those loved one of you. It's a familiar spirit threatening you, trying to, have an, trying to gain an advantage over you. To intimidate you. And you got to learn to speak back. I shall not die but live. And declare the works of God. I cancel any appointment with premature death. I declare the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Even when my enemies and my foe come up upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fall. If you believe it, put your hands together and shout yes. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Casting down imaginations. Imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself. High things. The, the enemy will God. set up arguments. That high thing there is arguments. Come up with arguments to undermine the knowledge of the word of God in you. Get you to compromise the knowledge of the word. To question the knowledge of God in you. And to accept another knowledge. Another knowledge. By the knowledge of God. Yeah. The Bible said cast them down. Bring into captivity. Every now and then I have to bring into captivity. Some imaginations and thoughts. They come through my mind and say, no, 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 no. Don't even try. Somebody say, don't even try. Don't even try. Somebody say, don't even go there. Don't even go there. Somebody say, it won't work. It won't work. Say, it shall not stand. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Sometimes I speak to myself. Yeah. Sometimes Rosa will say, babe, are you okay? Are you okay? I say, yes, I'm okay. I'm okay. And I know why she's asking me, are you okay? Yeah. Because I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to somebody. Yeah. I'm speaking the word. And I know somebody somewhere must hear the word. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and even my foe come up upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumble and they fear. I am sending a message to somebody. I'm sending a message to the adversary somewhere. And he hears me. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Put your hands together and say yes. Hallelujah. Say yes. Amen. Come with me to John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not, uh -huh. but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You have a house, it's yours, registered in your name. That does not stop thieves from attempting and trying to come and steal from you. The house is yours, but the enemy is a thief. And if you let him, he will come in. You can't say you're tired, so he should just come and take everything. I'll show you something. 
Whenever you give in to the enemy, what happens? He comes to ransack everything. He doesn't play fair. Come with me to Acts 12 and 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. To what? To vex certain of the church. Talk to me. To what? To vex certain of the church. To what? To vex certain of the church. Did he say to vex the whole church? No. Are you hearing me? Setting of the church. Not everybody. Please hear me. And please understand. That the devil is not interested in everybody. He's interested in the game changers. He's interested in those who carry potential. And potential is what you are capable of becoming which you haven't yet become. He looks out for people in the family who has potential to be great, to be something, and to be dangerous. And he goes after them. Setting of the, setting of, and he went for Peter. He had finished Stephen and James, and he said, now, let me look out, you know. And the Bible said, because he saw that it pleased the Jews. Do you know there are people happy to see you in pain? But let them be disappointed and discredited. Anyone that is happy and is rejoicing at our heads, let our pain become their portion. Let what is happening to us turn on them. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. There are people who are happy to see you in pain, but let them be discredited and put to shame. Yea, let them be disadvantaged and be turned back. Let their honors be turned into dishonor. And let their favors be turned into disfavor. Let the advantage they have be turned into disadvantage. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let them be disinherited of their inheritance. Let them be dispossessed of their armor. Let them be stripped of every weapon of advantage. In the name of the Lord Jesus, put your hands together. Say yes. Say yes. Somebody say, do O Lord, do O Lord. Setting of the church. You know, in, in every family, you know, my mother bled for four months when she took seed of me. And she used to lie in cold blood. We couldn't eat because of the pregnancy. And Dr. Sacramento said, Florence, you can't carry this pregnancy. I need to save your life. So they went to theater and did a DNC. And they aborted, took the baby out of my mother's womb. Months after the stomach kept growing, they went back to theater and realized that apparently we were twins. And the first DNC took my twin out and by some divine intervention and providence, I was kept in my mother's womb. Because I had to be here. I had to stand before you. Is anybody hearing me? Say, I hear you. Amen. And my mother used to tell me that when I was young, any time I was sick, it was life and death. That my siblings, all my siblings, they used to be sick. But for me, any time I was sick, it was life and death. Same sickness others had. When it came to me, it was like, if something don't happen, that was the end. Somebody, like, they gave a decree to kill all children, male children, under the age of two years because they were looking for Jesus, the spirit of Herod. And when, before Moses was born, a decree was made to kill and annihilate all the male children of the Hebrews because of one man, one man. Moses. So sometime in families, fathers and mothers, I want all fathers and mothers here, give me a wave offering. May I please submit to you. Never give up on your case, especially the difficult ones. I remember, I remember my mother gave up on me and my auntie would tell her, Florence, 
Florence, don't write this one or you say this one, useless boy. This one is useless. Among all my children, he's a useless one. He will never amount to anything. She literally cursed me. And my auntie would say, Florence, don't say that. And years after, when I got born again, she used to call me my boyfriend, my boyfriend, my boyfriend. The useless became boyfriend. And my father, my father used to, my father would look at me among all my 37 brothers and sisters and would say, Nicholas, who are you? Who are you? And I said, your son. He said, you are not my son. You don't look like me. This is not who I am. Why are you like this? Why are you like that? And I said, Papa, I don't know. Father, he, he could not deal with me. I was troubled. And I didn't know what was troubling me. But I knew something was after me to destroy me. Everywhere I was, everywhere I went to, there was trouble. Everywhere. Nicholas. Nico. Eba. Eba. Hey. He's coming. Eba. I never knew I would be. I was born to be a preacher. I had no idea. But hear me. Somebody knew it. Tell somebody. Somebody knows who you are. You. Somebody knows who you are. Everything for me was a fight. I started fighting in my mother's womb before I was born. In the state of innocence, I was fighting. And up to today, I'm still fighting. Still fighting. Things that are easy for others, it doesn't come easy for me. I have to put up a fight. And when I fight, I win. And when I don't fight, it don't really go well. It just prolongs things. And I realize that it's because of what I carry. Are you hearing me? When you see people go through problems, whether they are men of God or prophet, a politician, evangelist, and bishop, pastors, archbishop, and you see them going through scandal and, and stigma and things have been thrown at them, be very careful what you say because you don't know what is behind the scene. You don't know what is responsible for what they are going through and you don't know what is really happening. Say, I hear you. When Nancy Mandela was sent to prison, nobody understood why he was in prison for 27 years. But God allowed him to hide him in prison and when he came out, he became one of the best presidents that has ever, ever ruled a nation in Africa and in the nations of our world, Nelson Mandela. He said the other day, and I quote, it always seems impossible until it is done. He said again the other day, and I quote, he said, as I stand, at the door to my freedom, I realize that if I don't give up my bitterness, my unforgiveness for all that has been done to me, I will walk through this door of freedom and liberty and still be in prison. Setting of the church. Not everybody in the church. Not everybody in the family. Look out for the best. For the ones with potential in the family and go after them. Go after them. Mary Mandaline was possessed with seven demons. And her job was to break the oil of the alabaster box at the feet of Jesus and anoint him for his burial. But there was a man in the book of Mark chapter 5 who impacted seven regions and brought revival to the seven regions. In his case, he was possessed with 6,000 demons, a legion. Why? It was his assignment. It's what you carry that determines your warfare. So before you throw a stone at me because I'm going through some difficult times, before you throw a stone at my children or my loved ones, be careful because you don't know what will come after you and your children tomorrow. It's just a matter of time. Come on, put your hands together, somebody. And hear me. Don't call me and ask me, Papa, what is going on? I don't know what's going on. 
If I know what is going on, you will not call me and ask me what's going on. Bob Cole. Bob Cole. Some of you are young. There was a guy in this country called Bob Cole. He used to do movies. And one day somebody asked him and said, Bob Cole, Bob, if yeah, yeah. And he said, if yeah, yeah. He said, it's all well with you and your house. And he, he said, if all is well, I will not be handcuffed. May you never be handcuffed in life. In the name of Jesus, say yes. Before you criticize people, before you throw a stone at others, before you call me and say, Papa, what's going on? Ask God. And check your life. Go ahead and give him praise. Before you attack somebody's marriage because yours is working, be careful. Because you don't know why yours is working and someone else's own is not working. You think anybody wants to be bad? You think somebody wants to go into marriage and not and fail. Nobody wants to fail. But in this life, things can happen. Things happen in life. But may the Lord show you a token for good. May the Lord be merciful unto you in the day of calamity. May you escape. The name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Let me show you a scripture. Come with me, please. My time is almost up. Jesus. Come with me quickly. To 2 Chronicles 18:30. 2 Chronicles 18:30. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, uh -huh. saying, Fight ye not with small or great, uh -huh. save only with the king of Israel. You see, there was a war. And the king of Israel was at a battle. And the king of Syria was losing the war. Then suddenly, it dawned on him that the reason why he was losing the war was because of the king of Israel. So he called all his captains of the chariots and said, let me tell you something. We are losing this war. And the reason is because of the king of Israel. So leave everybody alone. Forget all the thousands on the field and concentrate on only the king of Israel. Somebody say, only, only, only. Talk to me, say, only. That's why you see one particular son or daughter in the family. And the enemy will throw everything at that son and at that child or at that marriage or at that relationship. It's because the enemy knows the potential that person is carrying. Somebody say, potential determines your battle. Say, potential determines your warfare. So the fact that you are not going through anything doesn't mean you are more anointed than me. No, no, no. It's because what you carry is different from what I'm carrying. It's because where I'm going is different from where you are going. For it is God that maketh one to differ from another. Say yes. He said, concentrate on nobody. Attack nobody. I want you to concentrate on only one person. He said, forget the great, forget the mighty, forget the small. Just concentrate on the king of Israel alone. If you strike that one, you have access to the other. Say, I lift up a counter attack. <laughs> Say, I raise a counter attack by the blood of Jesus. On any time sensitive attack on my life and on my family. On this, I say, I break it as I put my hands together. I break every demonic concentration and every time sensitive attack in the name of Jesus on Satan of the church. They could two kadisadas. Leteiki tu kadan valanda kawahansian mola yam makuwa san li tu kandi pandulasi. Oh, Sakidi Aman, Amadula, Itu Lamahada, Keton de Kasibalaha. Amen. Quickly, please go to Acts 12 and 5. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, uh -huh. but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made. Prayer was 
without season. Prayer wars without season. Every now and then. No. They prayed every now and then. No. But they prayed without season. That word without season means they prayed until something happens. Hear me? Through intercessors, don't pray according to time. They pray until something happens. And that's why I'm asking you to join the one million strong. If you haven't registered, please register and become part of the tribe of the one million strong intercessors. It is mandatory, it is necessary, it is required, and it is a subpoena. They pray without season. Peter didn't come through because he was very anointed or because he prayed and everybody else or because he had a strong prayer life. He didn't break through because he was gifted and anointed or he was the head of the church or because he has the keys to bind and to loose and to open. No, he came through because prayers were offered unto God on his behalf without season and an angel of the Lord came out of time into eternity to the geographical location where he was kept in prison. May every Peter among us, may every Peter in our generation held in prison break loose and break free. As we put our hands together, we intercede without season for all the Peters of our family, for all the Peters of this house and this nation held in bondage, in prison, in captivity, that they might break loose and break free in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let me finish now. I have another service I must attend to, so let me finish. Come with me to First Thessalonians five seventeen. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray every now and then. No, sir. Pray when you feel like praying. No. Pray when you are down. No. Pray when you are up. No. Pray without ceasing. In Malala Kutuku Wada Sindi Bahasan, the Latu Kula Ikisuan, a Miliki Tum Wakasada Hamadun, Melehemudu Kumahadikisind, Falahada Kawahasiti Kahasada. This thing is continuous, church. I know you're looking at me somewhere. I wish it was different, but it is what it is. Colossians 4 2. Continue in prayer. Do what? Continue in prayer. Pray every now and then. No. But what? Continue in Continue prayer. Continue in prayer. And watch in the same with uh -huh. thanksgiving. Watch in the same. Amen. Watch the same. Stay awake when others are asleep. Thanksgiving means have an attitude of gratitude that the battle is already won. That the victory was won and determined before you were born. Hallelujah. Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Uh -huh. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to what? Pray. Pray every now and then. No. But what? Always. Somebody say always. 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 Luke 18 8. 18, 8. I tell you. No, go to 7 and then come to 8. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which uh -huh. cry day and night? Which cry? Him? Day and night. Which cry every now and then? No, sir. Which cry day? No. Which cry night? No. But which cry? Day and which night. Which cry? Day and night. So God will avenge you if you cry day and night. Say yes. And look at verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Avenge them speedily. Go ahead. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. You see, that faith he's referring to is different from saving faith. It's different from the gift of faith. This is talking about prayer. Relentless prayers. Persistent prayers. Praying without ceasing. Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall return to earth, will he find? persistent prayers on this earth. That's what that faith there refers to. It's talking That whole chapter of Luke 18 is talking about prayer. And let me tell you something. If you think those of us who pray don't have faith, you are joking. Because prayer 
is the highest expression of faith. Talking to a man and a person you've never seen. You've never seen him before. You don't know whether he's hearing you or not. And most time when you even pray, you don't hear anything. You don't see any sign. But you keep praying, you keep talking. You must really have faith to do that. So prayer is the highest expression of faith. When the Son of Man come, shall he find consistent, persistent prayers on earth. Because persistent breaks resistance. Come with me to 1 Kings 20. 1 Kings 20. Verse 2 to 6. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city. Yeah. And said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Adad. Ben-Adad. Ben-Adad is still here. Ben-Adad is a spirit. He's still around. And he's interested in you and everything you have. Look at his interest. Number one. Thy silver and thy gold is mine. Turn to somebody and say, Do you know somebody is interested in your silver and your gold? You. Yeah. I want you to be aware of that. You think you are minding your own business, but somebody somewhere is interested in your silver and in your gold. Go ahead. Thy wives also and Aha, thy children. Thy what? Your wife. wife. And your children. Your honey. And your children. The ones you work for. You labor for. Somebody is interested in your wife, your children, and in your husband. You husband, mishandling her, somebody wants her. And you wife, taking him for granted, somebody is interested in him. And those children, somebody wants them. Someone is interested in what you have. Go ahead. Even the goodliest are mine. Uh -huh. Every good thing you have, somebody is interested in it. Uh -huh. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine, uh -huh. and all that I have. And the you messengers... See, hear me. Never give in to the enemy. Tell somebody, never give in to the enemy. Say, never surrender to evil. Somebody say, fight! Talk to me, say, fight! The good fight of faith. Say, fight! The good fight of faith. Go ahead. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh Bernadette, saying, You know why you must fight the good fight of faith? Because if you give in, the enemy will come back. He always comes back. Even when you don't give in, he will come back. The Bible said, And he left Jesus for a season. He will come back. So fight. Go ahead. Although I have sent unto thee, saying, uh -huh. Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children. You see, look at how the enemy works. So he doesn't play fair. He's a bully. He's relentless. Go ahead. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this he time. He said, I'm sending fresh and new demons to come. <laughs> the old ones, they finish the deal. I'm sending another group to come. We call it demonic reinforcement and demonic regathering and demonic comeback. Say, I block demonic come back. Say, I intercept. Demonic come back. Say, I scatter. Demonic regathering. In the name of Jesus. Say, I block demonic reinforcement. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together. Go ahead. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time. Uh -huh. And they shall search thine house uh -huh. and the houses of thy servants. Uh -huh. And it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand uh -huh. and take it away. Uh -huh. He said, all that I have requested for is not enough. Listen, when it comes to the devil, it's never enough until he finishes you. So fight. Put up a fight. And if you fight, you win. Stand on your feet.